Deshar, and today in reading, we are really going to focus on our characters that we've been introduced to so far in Tolliver's Secret. So I hope you are ready to analyze and look deeply and carefully at these characters to figure out who are they and why are they important. Remember, analyzing characters happens throughout the entire story, not just right at the beginning when we're introduced to them. Readers need to watch for what they can learn from these characters and be aware of how they change throughout the story and what we can take away from them as readers. In historical fiction, they're a little bit different than characters in other stories because you kind of have to be able to decide between if the character is a fictional or fake made up character by the author or was that character an actual real person in history. So on the screen in front of you, I've got an example over here. Hopefully you recognize this man. This is George Washington. So he is will be in this book and has been mentioned in this book. He is a real person. We obviously know that he was in, he was alive during the American Revolution. So over here we have Ellen sitting in between these two red coats, right? She is the fictional character. So what you have to understand, guys, is the characters, regardless fake or real, they will behave in realistic ways, meaning they're going to behave just like we do in real life. Most of them in this story are going to be fictional or made up by the author, but some we will come across that will be real. So as we listen, guys, if you're like, is that person real that Ms. Shar, Ms. Cam, or Mr. Han just read, or are they fake? There's something called Google, and you can happily Google them up and say, oh, was so-and-so real? If nobody comes up, then they're probably made up. But you have to understand that the characters that are made up, a.k.a. Ellen and Grandfather and all the people we've been introduced to so far, they are, these authors do a ton of research on what people were like back then. What did they do? They are probably based off of someone who lived during that time period. So the author's not just making up some random character. They've done research to make sure they fit into the time period and things like that. So as you think about characters, you're going to come across real people that were alive in history and some fictitious or made up characters that the author has put in to keep the story going. So to help us analyze characters as we read this story, we're going to think about three different questions. Remember, analyzing characters, guys, is just looking deep into these characters and pulling out what can we actually learn from them. So the first question we're going to think about is how do they act? Because their actions tell us a lot about them as characters. The second question is how do they feel about others, other people they come in contact with? Third question, how do they feel about themselves? So throughout the story, how do they feel about themselves? And using these three questions, we're going to dig so much deeper into these characters that we come across we come across in our books. I'm going to give this analyzing characters a try. And I'm going to model this for you using Grandfather. He was one of the main characters we were introduced to in Chapter 1. And we just went over those three questions. So we're going to use those questions to guide our thinking. The first one is, how do they act? So we're thinking about Grandfather in Chapter 1. How did he act? And I came across three different ways that he acted. The first one was sneaky. I say sneaky because one of the first couple pages, he is coming downstairs and he's ripping the curtains together and he's pinning them together so no one could see what they were doing. And to me, that comes across pretty sneaky, like grandfather's trying to hide something. Another feeling I have that I, or I'm sorry, another way they acted was he was uneasy. When you're uneasy, you're just kind of like, little things bother you, and you want to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, and his was uneasy, and I think he was uneasy because the British were upstairs. He was, The British were living with them, and he was uneasy, making sure they didn't hear them, making sure that uh, snuff box got into the bread and it got in there correctly. He, he was just very on edge. And then the final thing that he acted was loving. Towards the end of the chapter, he was very loving towards Ellen. And I think we saw that, and he, he kind of freaked out on her, and then all of a sudden he showed compassion and love towards her. Now, what I want you to notice is we're only in chapter one, guys. Okay, we're not going to have long, long lists of all these things because we're just being introduced to these characters. But it's a great way to start thinking and analyzing about them because we're going to learn a lot about them throughout the book. But how they act. I want you to think of how does that character act and how do I know it? I didn't just sit here and write the three words up and look at you and smile. I supported each one of them with text evidence. That's something that we're going to expect you guys to do as well. Now, the next question of ways we can analyze characters, how do they feel about others? So there's two, 
two groups of people I saw grandfather kind of come in contact with, and one was his family, and I think he loves his family. And you can tell he probably would do anything in his power to help his family, to support his family. You can already tell he loves his family because when they moved to New York, we got a little glimpse of it. They moved to New York, he welcomed them in and allowed them to live with him. So he absolutely loves his family. But then on the flip side, those people living upstairs in their house, he absolutely hates. He despises the British and despises a new word, if you don't already know it, that means hate. So he despises... the British. And you can tell that by the things he says and how he speaks about the British in chapter one. So we've looked at how grandfather acts. We've looked deeply about how he feels about others. And then the last one is, how do they feel about themselves? And this is one of the questions, guys, that's going to be a little tricky. You're going to have to really use that, that fifth grade, almost sixth grade brains. How do they feel about themselves? It does not come out and say, grandfather is very happy with himself. That'd be too easy. We've got to use our brain and think deeper. And I think he feels very confident. And I say confident because he's obviously hiding something inside this piece of bread. And he's confident in that. He's got literally the British living right above him. And I think you guys can kind of figure out that he something in there is having to do with the war. And I think he is so confident in the fact that he is helping the Continental Army. He's helping defeat these British. But this came from my head. Based on what I read, I was like, ah, oh, he must feel pretty confident about himself. So when you get to this one, the how they feel about themselves, you really got to think deeper. It's not just going to pop magically out of the book. Think about how do you think they feel about themselves. So let's review really quickly. When you are analyzing characters, which you guys are going to go give a try in just a second, think about how they act in the book, which ours is just going to be from chapter one, how they feel about others, and how they feel about themselves. Because now we can look at the answers to those three questions and kind of get a really good glimpse of who grandfather is. Grandfather's a confident man who loves his family, but also despises or hates the British. He acts sometimes a little sneaky or uneasy and sometimes even loving. Right there, in, I think it's like 16 pages of the first chapter. We've already got a great picture of grandfather. So now it is gonna be your turn to go give it a try. And so click the next button on the module and you're going to give this a try for Ellen, the main character of the book. So if you have a piece of paper or a whiteboard or whatever to write on, go ahead and create this little chart and it'll help you then write your response. So then you would take this and write a complete sentence with each one of these. If you guys have questions, reach out to your teachers.